Hi, and uh, welcome to Daniel Weekly number 24 uh, in March uh, 10. I'm trying out a new angle for the camera today, so you can see a little bit different. Uh, I'll show you. I used to have this kind of, and I'm kind of turning it around a bit to try try something new. I'm hoping to get more of the natural light from my ceiling window here. Um, we'll see how this works out. Uh, uh, I wanted to mention that um, in November 2012 we did the last or the previous release in the LibSSH2 Lib SSH2 project, the 1.4.3 release, and now it is time to make another one, and uh, I'll call it 1.5.0. We'll release it tomorrow together with a security advisory. Um, stay tuned for that. Uh, I think it's fun to finally get a release of that. Um, out we've been trying a couple of times but never really got around to it and um, yeah we're a bit slow in the project so if you if you are, are interested in ssh and uh, ssh library we could use your help we're uh, currently debating back and forth pretty much uh, about uh, if we should host the git repo on github or not and basically we are so um, LibSSH2, the Git is on GitHub too now, as a lot of other projects. Um, yeah, tomorrow new release. Also, GitHub released a blog post. Actually, they did a talk on, on, at FastTem that I attended about one of the guys from GitHub. It's a really good talk and it's really interesting because they emphasize how they want to become a better participant in the open source community, basically to help projects use the licenses and proper licenses for the projects that they publish on github and i uh, i read this blog post by them see link somewhere uh, um, about how only less than 20 percent of all the repositories actually uh, have a license so and the kind of a distribution which kind of license the projects use and then i <laughs> i thought oh that's really low and i kind of tweeted about it and then i uh, Minus uh, a friend of mine pointed out that they have a really lame parser for it, and I checked out the parser, which they kind of link to in the in the blog post, which only checks the license file in uppercase in the repository for a license, which basically well, none of my projects use that kind of file, and a lot of other projects won't use a file called license in uppercase, including the license. So no wonder they can't find more than 20% licenses since their scanning is pretty much, yeah, well, lame is a good word, I think. So yeah, nothing to worry about. <clears throat> um, then I uh, did... Um, I did uh, this blog post during this week about TLS and HTTP2. Got uh, quite a lot of attention. Uh, got some um, interesting feedback. Well, really, I, what I try to explain is is that TLS is not mandatory in the HTTP2 spec. spec. That's I mean that is a fact. You can just read the spec and say this is how you do it over TCP in, in clear text, and this is how you do it over TLS. So exactly like HTTP 1.1 was made, two different ways, and and it also includes details on how to upgrade from an HTTP 1.1 connection, how to ask for I want to talk HTTP 2 instead, upgrade colon blah blah blah, and and, and it works. And in curl, for example, we support both um, TLS and non-TLS uh, HTTP 2. And it works. And, uh, but, but then, of course, as I mentioned before, and, and as uh, I guess everyone knows now, um, the browsers, Chrome and Firefox, and even the Tech Preview or Internet Explorer, they all just do um, TLS-based HTTP2. And I explained in this blog post how come it didn't get to be mandatory TLS, because I get a lot of questions about why not, and and really what, what were the reasons, and, and who were against it, and stuff like that. And I tried to just summarize those um, may, maybe not facts but there were kind of the reasons why uh, the, the, the my view of why we didn't get any consensus on making it mandatory and of course there's a lot of opinions and there's a lot of strong um, opinions and uh, so fun stuff read up about it if you're interested or skip it uh, there is also um, going on we're we're working on um, uh, 
getting a TLS false start support included in curl and th that made us um, well Alessandro was working on it he made then the um, ALPN and the NPN support possible to get used outside of HTTP2 because you, we need those extensions to make uh, make use of TLS false start and so on so we're kind of advancing the TLS support too and we also have this bug um, so if you're interested in helping out, this is a kind of a little bite chunk bug someone could grab, or I will do it eventually. It's about uh, when talking HTTP2, we need to have a kind of a stricter requirement on what kind of TLS we use. We, we have higher requirements on, on cipher suites and so on. And right now then, if, if we don't do anything, we just get the best possible according to the old standard, which if we're talking to a very strict HTTP2 server with TLS, it'll deny us access. So for example, the golang.org server um, checks that and rejects if we're not specifying a, a, a suitably strong cipher suite on, on the command line or, or uh, libcurl option. And that's a bit unfortunate. So we need to kind of have a, if you go HTTP2, we need a stronger uh, set of ciphers or, or, and selections and we can only use TLS 1.2 or newer and so on. Um, otherwise I, I could mention that I don't think that I mean if you're if you're following the mailing list and the bike trackers right now in the current project you're you're seeing now that I'm not really keeping up keeping up with the pace. There are patches and bugs now coming in much faster than I'm able to respond. So well bear with me and, and know that I I'm aware of this, I see it happening, but uh, I can't do much than just do the best I can. And um, if, if it takes too long, please remind me. I mean, send the same stuff again after if I haven't responded to anything within, within a week or two or something like that. And uh, consider to post the bugs in, in, the, in the bug tracker because we don't lose them as easily if they're in the bug tracker. Then they'll just make a bigger list in the backtracker, which is um, a bit of annoying in itself, but at least we won't just miss them. <clears throat> um, as you see, I have the screen here today, so when, I'm, when I have the camera on this, I have to kind of turn my head a little bit to read what I was planning to say, really. Um, yeah, there's an HTTP uh, workshop being planned for discussing um, what to do with HTTP HTTP going forward beyond HTTP2 that's going to happen in uh, this summer by a bunch of people outside of the ITF or W23C or anything like that. It's just a kind of a private initiative. Um, but I'm going to submit my ideas and uh, I'm hopefully try to attend that. Could be fun. If you have ideas about HTTP after or what HTTP should or shouldn't do in the future, uh, please tell me about it because um, I'd like to get more opinions on that. I mean, we all do, but when we have this kind of opportunity to have a workshop and we can discuss really, what do you think? What should we do? Let's, let's take the opportunity to, I mean, and then I mean really wild and crazy forward thinking, whatever, tiny details, big things. I'm trying to, I've started to at least uh, gather some thoughts and um, ask for input and yeah. So um, this week going forward then, I'm, uh, I'm working with a bunch of online offline bugs and features in Firefox. I'm working with a bunch of bugs in curl. Um, the, when we open up uh, issues and more kind of friendly uh, pull requests on GitHub on, for curl, that kind of started to uh, flourish too. So. It, it's, I think it works. Being more GitHub friendly has, has uh, seems to work. I mean, we seem to get more stuff from there right now. And the, uh, people are uh, showing some attention and, and giving it suitably, uh, I mean, other people are also there and, and uh, responding and uh, paying attention to what happens. So I, I, I like it. Uh, and otherwise, then the the, re the release in the uh, LibSSH2, we have other stuff in the LibSSH2 that we really should get going with. I mean, we have a, a large amount of bugs there that nobody really pays attention to, so we could really, really need some more help there. 
otherwise, I, I'm think, I mean, it's just another open source project. So of course we have a lot of bugs. We do, we do everything we can. For me, it is a project that's always um, a bit further down in my priority list. I tend to focus. I mean, I have my work stuff that's Firefox and the Firefox related things. And I have my primary uh, spare time project that's curl. And I work on, uh, in that order, I, I work Firefox primarily work time. I work on curl primarily, primarily spare time. And then I have a bunch of other projects and, and Libus, Libus H2 is one of those other projects that I try to, yeah, I want to bring it forward. I want to make it sure that it's good, but um, my spare time and my, my energy and, and, and my, my will is just not always enough to, to have everything going as good as I want. And then I have the CA risk project too, that I'm also kind of trying to maintain for, for uh, asynchronous name resolving and, and DNS functions. And that too kind of suffers from that, that I'm just not being, I'm, I'm not man enough to run all those projects as good as I want to at the same time. So some of them just have to suffer a bit until someone else steps up and, and, and help out more and better. So that's it. <clears throat> uh, another fun week coming up. Uh, send, yeah. So I'll talk to you again next week. Bye.